I'm Frank, licensed New Zealand immigration advisor, uh, coming live from the city of Hamilton, New Zealand, like every week uh, on a Tuesday. So it's that time of the week when uh, yours truly uh, comes live and uh, speaks to all you wonderful people from different parts of the world uh, who would like to migrate to New Zealand, uh, either to come here and study in this wonderful country we call the land of the long white cloud or Aotearoa or who would like to come here and become permanent members of this beautiful country. So before I start, like every week, I would like to display my license, uh, which uh, I was, yeah, procured after a fair bit of uh, effort because I had to study that particular uh, course there, which was called the Graduate Certificate in New Zealand Immigration Advice, which has now gone on to become the Graduate Diploma in New Zealand Immigration Advice. So, but I had to kind of cram in six months uh, of uh, hardcore study and uh, get that Graduate Certificate in New Zealand Immigration Advice and also pass some police checks and a few other things before I was, uh, you know, given that license by a department of New Zealand called the Immigration Advisors Authority, uh, which is a government department, which regulates people like myself all across the world who provide immigration advice to uh, people who are wanting to come to New Zealand on a temporary or on a more permanent basis. So yeah, that's that's the story. And uh, uh, I and my beautiful team of people uh, who support me like always uh, on Skype, uh, they are, oh, that seems to have turned off. So, yeah, so my, we have a wonderful team of people in AJV. It is not just one individual. We are almost 35 people, including some uh, fantastic professionals from the overseas education industry, as well as uh, some great professionals from the in immigration fraternity. Uh, in fact, uh, last week, if you guys and girls have been following our, our Facebook uh, updates on our group, uh, which is called NZ Options on Facebook, and then we also have a page on uh, Facebook, uh, which is called uh, AJV Global. And this particular broadcast is coming live right now on uh, AJV Global uh, on the uh, page uh, that we officially run, uh, as well as on our official YouTube channel. Uh, actually, it's running on my YouTube channel called Arun Jacob, but you know it will get uh, copied to our official AJV Global YouTube channel as well later. But hey, look, uh, you know, uh, you would have seen uh, those of you who follow our work that we announced the joining of a senior immigration professional who joined our team. So we are, you know, I take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to Tanuva Majumdar, who was uh, one of the senior most immigration officers for New Zealand and India in their New Delhi branch for uh, 22 years. And, you know, when they decided to kind of, you know, uh, close the doors on that particular branch and consolidate their operations into, uh, you know, uh, only a few specific uh, offices across uh, the world, uh, you know, Tanua was looking at options and uh, I reached out to her and I said, hey, look, uh, I've known her, you know, during the course of my work uh, as an immigration professional for the last 15 years. And uh, yeah, she great, you know, kindly accepted our offer and uh, we are grateful to have her on board. And along with her, we also have five other ex-immigration officers who used to work with Immigration New Zealand. They are all part of uh, Team AJV and then there are a lot of our uh, other professional team members who have been working in the international education space for a very long time. And they all come into this, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, team with the same passion and enthusiasm that I and, you know, uh, uh, the rest of the team have shared for many, many years. And we are absolutely delighted to continue to promote New Zealand uh, to the best of our abilities. Right. So that's my opening spiel as always. And let's get started with some questions and answers. If I look a little tired, a little groggy. Yes, I am. I broke my normal trend of sleeping in late because I worked till almost three in the morning. But uh, yeah, I woke up early today and along with my colleague and uh, senior colleague and, uh, uh, and a fellow licensed immigration advisor, Mary, I drove to a nearby town in that direction uh, called Cambridge. Uh, so Mary and I, we met uh, 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 the founders of a very young uh, uh, Kiwi uh, software development company, which is also working in the education space. And, you know, they and we have been talking to each other for quite some time now, and we've been uh, trying to collaborate and see how we can work together. So it was awesome to go and meet uh, 
Michael uh, and his uh, you know co-founder uh, in Cambridge. And you know during the course of our conversation over a nice cup of t- uh, coffee, we also discussed other possibilities. And you know I recommended and suggested that they might want to use AJV students who are already present uh, in New Zealand and who are studying IT courses to involve them in their project and give them internships or you know even possibly uh, employment and uh, Michael and his uh, you know friend were very very happy to consider that suggestion so yeah just another little bit we are trying to do for our uh, uh, AJV students who come to New Zealand through us and you know that's our promise to all our students and clients is hey look you're coming to this country we will stand by you we will uh, you know walk with you and ensure we provide all the uh, support that we can and in fact recently uh, two of my colleagues Mary as well as Virginia who is our customer service uh, service manager as well as an ex-immigration officer they both went to Christchurch and organized a beautiful uh, get together for our students and clients there was an awesome get together where they all bonded with each other did a bit of networking and kind of got to know each other and you know I mean at the end of the day what we are doing is we are kind of you know putting that protective arms around all our clients and saying hey look we're there for you because we are people who live here and we kind of know this country have our networks and our contacts and we can leverage it for your benefit so if you guys and girls are serious about uh, uh, moving to New Zealand uh, I think you need to work with somebody like AJV because we are New Zealanders we are people who live in this country and nobody can offer you uh, information and services better than people like AJV all right guys so that's that's the promise you're gonna make today uh, as we get started. Uh, that you know, uh, in in, in uh, response to all this uh, information and advice that I provide, that you guys will pick up your phones and call our team members and engage with them and have a discussion and see how we can take your New Zealand aspirations forward. All right, cool. Let's get started. I'm gonna start looking at uh, some of the questions and answers. Questions and answers. Um, Hey guys, just a request to all of you and girls, uh, you know, if you are uh, watching this on YouTube as well as on uh, Facebook, request you to come to Facebook and post your questions there uh, because uh, it's easy for me to look at one tab rather than try and toggle between both the tabs. But yeah, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. All right, guys. Cool. Let's get started. First question, right, a lot of my colleagues have joined in, good to see them, Noah Susan Isaac has joined in from Christchurch, hi Noah, hope you had a good meeting with uh, Mary and Virginia and the rest of our AJV gang, Noah is one of our new students who just recently came to Christchurch and in fact today when I was driving in the morning to Cambridge I was checking with uh, Mary uh, how you know she and the rest of them were all doing and she said no they're all very happy to be in new zealand so yeah hello to everybody else who has joined in and the first question um this is from sohail sheikh uh, who shared his question on youtube and has also shared his number which is great hey look everybody who wants an answer to your question kindly share your number because you know that's what we expect in return for providing our uh, information and uh, knowledge so yeah please go ahead and share your numbers and you know, if I'm not able to answer your question comprehensively, one of our team members will get in touch with you later and we can continue to have the conversation. All right, cool. Okay, it says, good evening, Mr. Aron. Uh, I'm an MBA graduate having 10 years of experience in oil and gas field and also uh, CPP and CPPM certi- certified. What are the ch- job chances in this field? Uh, uh, hey, Sohail, uh, I think this is a very commonly asked question, uh, which comes pretty regularly, which is, uh, you know, a lot of people just like yourself have good backgrounds and good uh, qualifications and, uh, you know, uh, and experience as well. But the problem with finding jobs in New Zealand is that unless and until you are present in the country, it is almost impossible to uh, find a job because as I've explained in one of my videos, which is publicly posted on uh, YouTube, uh, you will see that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, employers in New Zealand uh, are not very um, prone to providing employment opportunities to people who are not legally present in the country and who do not have the legal uh, working rights uh, here in this country. So, you know, as an individual, you have a great background, by the way, and I think, you know, if you happen to be in New Zealand, but I think uh, you will do quite well because that's a fantastic background that I can read uh, uh, from your query. But the problem is that 
you are not present in the country and any prospective uh, you know employer would you know kind of walk a little bit of at trying to uh, you know uh, think through the process of hiring a foreigner who is not present in the country and that is what a lot of really good profiles that we receive week after week day after day uh, cannot progress further because employers are quite simply you know not people who understand immigration laws very well and they're like why am i going through the problem of trying to uh, hire somebody who does not have the legal right to work in new zealand and also you guys have to bear in mind that you know right now we have like tons of great quality of people already arriving into new zealand uh, there are a lot of international students who are coming in who have exceptional backgrounds just like you uh, so hail and then there are also people who come directly on you know a uh, skilled migrant category uh, so there is a lot of already good floating um, talent available already in new zealand and that's the reason people like yourself who are not present in the country are at a bit of a uh, you know drawback uh, you know or on the back foot because obviously employees would rather choose somebody who is present in the country and already have the legal working right and that's the reason we encourage people uh, to first get into the country if you're keen to find employment in new zealand or to find residence in new zealand because once you're here on a legal right uh, to work um, then it becomes a lot easier because the employer is also going to say all right the guy is already here in new zealand has got a, a you know a legal work visa so it becomes a lot easier for them to hire so my recommendation to you so hi is have a chat with our uh, team and as i said we are uh, good at proposing solutions where you can enter the country uh, we obviously uh, you know suggest a study plus settled pathway because if you take up the appropriate level of course you will get a uh, one two or three years of post study work visa which is a long enough time for you to be able to you know display your many talents and go seek employment which can potentially eventually lead to a uh, residency as well so that's my recommendation to you uh sohail so have a chat with our team and kindly engage with them when they call you uh because at the end of the day we are here to provide you good honest information uh simple straightforward transparent information what you do that informate with that information and the decisions you arrive at are your decisions and your prerogatives we are not the people who will force you into your decision so yeah just go for it pick up the phone you know when our team calls you please connect with them good have a nice good long chat and at the end of the day you take that call but we are here to provide you with any information that you want all right cool okay uh andrews toms i remember your name andrews uh, i will need to get a confirmation if you are one of our clients um uh, i don't get that uh, nor has andrews given any uh uh you know uh provided any kind of uh, indication whether he is one of our students but so andrews if you can confirm if you're one of our students i'll come back and answer your question all right okay like uh ja jack says i'm a student of ajb i just want to know about student interview can you share some tips my case officer is sonia warren hey jack uh, thank you for confirming that you are an ajb student uh like i keep saying in all my live sessions these sessions are essentially meant for our students for our AGV clients and their families so we are very pleased to you know interact with you and provide you with our information and you not know, have this one on one interactions as well uh yeah i mean uh, what about the interview the interview is uh, by and large uh, you know uh, the way we present our cases a lot of our students actually do not get an interview it is not mandatory that every student will definitely get an interview that is not the way immigration new zealand works also bear in mind that they are already trying to deal with a heavy case load so obviously they'll try and cut down on their time and effort being uh, spent on each case so you know if you are an agv student you know uh, and by virtue of the fact that we have a good track record with immigration new zealand and we have more than a 90% uh, success rate with our visas obviously those factors also kick in and you may not even get an interview call in the first place but if you were to get an interview call i have a simple uh, instruction speak the truth do not hide anything just talk naturally talk confidently uh, if you're not sure about certain aspects about you know the course for instance and how it's going to help you in the future have a mock call with your agb advisor sonia who by the way is a fantastic professional so have a chat but you know like i said you may not even get an interview but you know even if you do get an interview the simple instruction not only to you jack but you know to everybody else who's listening and is 
just speak uh, honestly because immigration officers like nothing better than honesty and if you're honest and put everything on the table even if there are small discrepancies they're willing to overlook them sometimes and you know kind of uh, give you the benefit of doubt so that's my uh, suggestion to you jack and by and large what is an immigration officer testing for in an interview is your uh, whether your your funds are good uh, whether your english is good uh, whether your uh, sincerity of purpose is correct you know whether you have the right sincerity of purpose in coming to new zealand to study uh, and the last thing they are looking at is your academic and your uh, work track record if you have some work experience so just just stick to that and if you want to have a mock session and have a bit of a practice you know call up sonia and she will set it up for you and you know you can have a bit of a you know, chat and an interview practice but hey look thanks for choosing ajv much appreciated and i hope to see you here in new zealand very very soon all right cool Okay, I'm quickly checking to see if my team has given me any indication. And I have a confirmation from our team leader, Navya, who says that Andrews is actually one of our students and his application is currently with uh, immigration. So I'm going to scroll back up and answer Andrews' question, which is, sir, is there any confirmation or assurance that students who didn't get visa for february intake will go by july and the students for july intake will get their visa in time please clear my doubt hey uh andrews very good question and i'll be honest with you this is a question that has been uh, uh at the top of our minds in fact as i start, you know, told you at the start of the session a very senior uh, ex-immigration officer has joined our team and we've been having discussions internally uh, between herself, myself, and our two other senior managers, and we are trying to see how we can address the situation. So we are also trying to, you know, go and meet the senior officers in the Mumbai office and it kind of give that extra confidence that AJV uh, uh, cases are kind of pre-verified and ready for a decision. So we're kind of trying to build that rapport with uh, the immigration department. Uh, but yeah, hey, look, uh, like I said, uh, not only uh, you, but who has a deadline to make it by a particular time and us as an organization and as a company who has to make it by you know uh, ensure that all those applications are cleared by a particular time but even immigration new zealand does work to certain targets and they will also need to clear these applications and kind of move forward because they're getting a lot of flack at the moment you know not just from uh, people uh, like us and from individual students like yourself but also from the media and there have been quite a few uh, you know uh, media articles already about the delays and you know uh, processing stuff like that so they are bucking up they are moving it forward and i'm quite confident andrews that you know you're i'm so, uh, sorry about the fact that you already missed your february intake uh, and you will be looking at uh, the july intake but i'm quite uh, confident that you should be able to get through and like i said from our side we are trying to put a few measures in place as well so that our pending cases can be pushed forward uh, you know as well at the earliest all right so hang in there thank you for your patience and you know also thank you for choosing to be an ajb client all right thanks andrews right next question um sugam you asked me a question but you will need to uh, please uh, uh, you know uh, uh, share your contact number uh, because I would like to answer questions with the contact number first, uh, because obviously then there is a give and take. Otherwise, I'll be answering, and after that, we don't know how to get in touch with you. It doesn't serve uh, our purpose, and you know, and we don't want to just take our information and go and work with somebody else. Yeah. Hey, look, at the end of the day, we are a business, we are not a charity. So I will really appreciate that all you guys and girls who want to ask a question, if you will also share your, uh, you know, uh, contact number with us. All right. Cool. Okay, Rajesh Kana asks, uh, and because he's mentioned the name of uh, uh, one of our call, my colleagues called Grace, who is also one of our uh, visa processing officers, uh, he says, how long does student visa processing take these days? Uh, my case officer is Grace. Uh, hey, Rajesh, thank you so much for uh, choosing to work with AJV first and foremost. Uh, and I just mentioned that, you know, there has been a bit of delay with immigration New Zealand, and they have been trying to uh, kind of buck up and make it, uh, uh, you know, uh, a slightly more faster uh, process. Uh, the 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 uh, you know the published information on the immigration website is that they will uh, resolve all uh, cases within eight weeks. 
but it has been taking slightly longer than that. But I think, like I said, we are putting in some efforts from our side and hopefully you will see a result soon. But I think, yeah, normally within eight weeks, you should be able to have a response. All right, Rajesh, thanks for asking a question and thanks for choosing AJV as well. All right. Okay, question from Krishna Chandran, who, who shared his telephone number. Uh, thanks, Krishna, for that. Uh, and he says, sir, can you talk about scope of mechatronics in New Zealand? All right, uh, uh, Krishna, good question. Mechatronics is one of those exciting fields where, you know, mechanical engineering is marrying electronics. And that's why I think they've come out with a whole new term for mechatronics, which, are, you know, sounds like something out of those Transformers movies where, you know, you see a car turning into a robot and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, hey, hey look, uh, it's not too far away uh, from that uh, era in human history when we probably will actually begin to see cars like that, which turn into, you know, uh, you know, those Transformers and whatever else uh, kids call them. But yeah, I think it's a very exciting field. Uh, and uh, as I told you, Mechatronics does sit very nicely both under uh, mechanical engineering as well as under electronics engineering. And the marriage of both these, uh, you know, engineering groups has brought out a whole new branch called uh, mechatronics. So I think it is a very cool subject to uh, uh, pursue because, you know, it is kind of bringing the best elements of mechanical as well as electronics and combining them together. And if you look at the massive automation um, that is happening uh, globally, worldwide, uh, again, you know, New Zealand may not be very heavy on industry, but mechatronics is not necessarily always just inventing those machines. It could be writing the software or designing the software for those uh, machines and, uh, and, you know, and equipment that runs on uh, principles of mechatronics. So I think it's a very exciting field to be involved with Krishna and uh, also, you know, engineering, both electronics as well as mechanical engineering are in the long term skill shortage list of New Zealand. So. I think great choice and you know right away at the top of my head i can think of a couple of institutions which offer very good courses in mechatronics but yeah i think yeah your choice is very good and you know fits very well with uh, where new zealand wants to head as a country because we are trying to attract people like your we you know with your background and your talent so yeah warm welcome uh, because you've shared your number our team will get in touch with you please interact with them and we'll put some options in front of you and then you can take it forward from there all right thanks krishna Nova says hello. Hi, Nova. Jagannath Savarkar. All right. Uh, hello, Arun. Uh, good evening. I'm going to quickly check to see if I have. Okay. Uh, Jagannath says hello, Arun. Good evening. This is Jagannath. I'm an AJV student working with Srinija. Can you please explain about how colleges work? Like whether <coughs> we would be loaded five days a week with schedule from nine to five or how? Thank you in advance. <laughs> Jagannath, good question. No, you will not be loaded uh, five days a week with schedule from nine to five. It is not like school. Uh, you're not going to kindergarten, uh, Jagannath. In fact, my team confirms uh, that you're going to apply for, you have applied for a graduate diploma in project management from UCall, fantastic college. Uh, very good course choice as well. But uh, like I said, it is not, uh, primary school or high school, you will not be loaded five days a week from nine to five. Uh, there will be a, of course, uh, the, the way it works at that level of study, because you're coming for, uh, uh, you know, a graduate diploma level, which by the way is uh, a graduate diploma is meant for people who already have a graduation or a degree level, uh, you know, qualification. So which means it's not a, a low level qualification, it's a high level qualification. And at that level, you would be expected to do a lot of self-study. You're expected to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, projects on your own and uh, a lot of group discussions with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, other uh, members in your uh, study uh, uh, group and, you know, in your classroom and stuff like that. So, yeah, so you will not be, you know, make, uh, you know, sit in a classroom from nine to five, for five days. So you would have uh, quite a few, I mean, at best, you might have two or three days of actual uh, uh, attending a classroom. Uh, but you know, most of the days you will be expected to kind of uh, do this independently on your under your own power, or you know, with other members from your group and your classroom. So yeah, you know, that's the way it works. So don't worry, Jagannath, you'll have enough time to get out and socialize and kind of indulge in your uh, passions and get out and see a little bit of New Zealand as well. But hey, look, thank you so much for choosing uh, AJ. We really appreciate that. 
as I keep saying in all my live broadcasts, all of you are smart young people with choices in front of you. You could have chosen anybody, but he chose to work with AJV, and th that shows uh, two things, that you have done your research uh, and that you know what is good for you because you're working with a company that's based in uh, New Zealand and you know is uh, very committed to the success of its children. And for those of you who would like to work with a company like us, those are your contact details. Uh, if you guys are based in India, we have set up a, a toll-free number for all of you. Uh, if you're not based in India, you can email us at info at ajvglobal.com. Or if you're already based in New Zealand, you're already here in New Zealand and you're studying uh, and you want some advice about further uh, work visas or resident visas, then you can contact my senior colleague and fellow licensed immigration advisor, Mary, uh, who will talk to you and you know explain the way forward. We also give tons of free advice and information to our uh, uh, you know, uh, AJV students who are present here in New Zealand, but the non-AJV students were a little standoffish. I'm being very honest about it, but <laughs> hey, look for our AJV students. We are there even in the middle of the night sometimes, and you know, getting on the phone and giving them lots of advice. You know, sometimes it's personal advice as well. Some of them are feeling homesick, so we get on the phone, talk to them, talk them out of it, and show them the you know possibilities in the future. And we network them with other uh, people and stuff like that. So it's been working. Pretty beautifully for us. So yeah, hey, look, uh, it's it's all going well. But for those of you who watch all these uh, videos that I do, and uh, uh, my colleague Mary, who comes also live uh, once a week, uh, would like to be part of this beautiful growing HIV family. All you've got to do is uh, get in touch with us uh, on those numbers or on those email addresses, and we will be happy uh, to make you part of the HIV family. All right, cool. Right, Devi Ganesh, uh, okay, uh, says, uh, hi, sir, I am one of your clients. Could you please update information regarding Silverfern work visa for a skill shortage work list? All right, Devi, uh, I know you did say you're one of our clients, but unfortunately, my team differs with that, and uh, we are a very well-coordinated team, guys, by the way, so my team has just told me, Devi, that you are actually not uh, showing up in any of our records, not with our our counseling team, nor with our service team. So unfortunately, I'll have to skip your question and keep moving forward. Uh, and hey, team, if you're listening to me, uh, which of course you will be, and if I'm missing any um, questions from our clients, please keep typing it on Skype and I'll keep picking it up because I have to keep looking at the scrolling here on Facebook as well as the scrolling on Skype. and. Sometimes the scrolling can you know, be a bit confusing and I might miss some questions. So, uh, you know, uh, team, if you got, you know, you guys, you'll have to keep pinging me on Skype in case I'm missing some questions. All right, cool. Going on to the next one, Roy Smith. Thanks, I. Uh, Roy Smith. Kiara, if someone got visa and want to change course in the same college, then it, ne it need to be applied for variation of change or directly changed by college. Hey, Roy, uh, again, uh, Kia ora. Uh, thanks for addressing me in Maori, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, kia ora, ketepehi akwe, which is, how are you? Uh, and if somebody got visa and want to change course in the same college, I mean, yeah, I mean, hey, look, uh, uh, technically, if you're changing a course, then obviously it is a change in your visa condition, so you will need to get a variation of conditions. I'm not sure which college you're in, and some colleges do have that online uh, ability to do it with, uh, Immigration New Zealand, but some don't have, so I don't know which college you're in, but I don't think you are one of our students, because if you're an AGB student, by now you would have been talking to us, and we would have uh, actually gotten it done. In fact, we guys also do a lot of free work for our <clears throat> AGB students, uh, where it is, you know, minor visa work, like variations and a few other small things. Uh, we also do a free post-study work visa process for all our uh, AGB students, so I don't think you're an AJV student, so I would suggest you go and check with your college. But yes, if you are going to change your course, it is a change in your visa condition, so you will need to go for a variation of conditions. All right, cool. <clears throat> right, Sagam has changed, her, has uh, shared his number, and I'll have to scroll back up because he has come back and shared his number. All right, Sagam, thanks for doing that. I appreciate that. Yeah. 
If you had done it the first time, I would have answered your question the first time. But uh, all right. So Gam says, hello, sir. I'm from Nepal. I'm doing Bachelor in Business Studies. My percentage is low, 45%. Okay, that is really low. And I want to learn photography course. I worked in some office as a photographer and NGOs as volunteers too. So can you tell I can apply for photography courses and what are the requirements for it? All right. Hey, look, Sudama. <clears throat> I'm glad you're getting onto this um, chat and asking me these questions because I absolutely love to encourage people to follow their real passion. And, you know, if you are a guy who is doing business studies and only getting 45 percent, I doubt if your heart is really into that particular subject or into that course. And it looks like you have a natural affinity or a natural, uh, you know, kind of uh, affiliation with uh, Photography, which is good for you. I think it's a great field because in New Zealand, we photography would come under the creative industry, which is one of our identified future growth areas in New Zealand. So I think it's a good choice. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you are an avid photographer and that's your real interest, I would strongly encourage you to pursue that passion. Whether you come to New Zealand or not, I think it's something that you must pursue because so you're a young person who has got a true passion and it looks like you're not doing too well in your business studies. This is the right time to make the switch and get into something that you love doing because I think in the words of uh, George Bernard Shaw, you have to do what you love uh, uh, doing or you'll be forced to love what you do, you know, kind of a situation. So, yeah, I think, yeah, just go for it. And yeah, absolutely. I think we will be able to help you to get into uh, a photography course here in New Zealand or even in other allied course in the creative field, which might have photography as one of its papers, or you know, it might even specialize in photography. But yeah, we'd be very keen to talk to you and see how we can, especially if you have a good portfolio of you know photogra uh, photographs that you've already taken. Uh, I think that will also create kind of the uh, the foundation on which uh, we can seek an admission and a future visa. Yeah, we'd be delighted to work with you, Sudam, because you know, like I said, AJV is not just a business that is you know trying to recruit international students and put them into um, uh, New Zealand institutions. But we are also about all you young people. We are actually here to empower you to go for your dreams and make it happen. And we are your collaborators. We are your supporters and we are the people who will stand by you. And, you know, we're required. We'll hold your hand and walk with you and ensure you get to that final destination. So absolutely, guys, you know, with AJV, you not only get a, a, a very professional, uh, you know, uh, New Zealand uh, admission and visa process, but you will also get a lot of uh, honest uh, motivation and honest uh, uh, support from us for you to go after your real dreams and not, you know, kind of fall, fall into those shallow uh, tracks, which eventually will not lead anywhere. So, yeah, hey, look, go for it, Sugam, and we will support you as best as we can. All right. So when our team gets in touch with you, yeah, please uh, talk to them, have a good long chat. At the end of it, if it doesn't work out, so be it. But, you know, at least give the respect to our team of having a good long interaction and you uh, you know utilize that opportunity to get as much information as you can and then you take a decision along with your family members and yeah you can take it forward from there all right cool right gopali bumbrel just want to know is there any delays nowadays due to christchurch mass care <laughs> in issuing work visas uh well i think uh gopal you were talking about the massacre and you just typed it as mass care but it was mass care as well but uh yeah i think there has been a bit of a delay because you know uh like the entire country kind of went into a bit of a lockdown so also a lot of government departments kind of you know had to recalibrate and immigration especially had to uh practically set up a whole new uh cell to deal with this emergency Weasels that people were, uh, you know, demanding, uh, or, you know, or not so much demanding, but wanting because they had to be present in the country to be with their loved ones who were caught up in that unfortunate incident. But yeah, there definitely has been a bit of a delay. All right, cool. Moving on. Right, uh, Ramya Sharma asks a question, but Ramya has not shared any. Uh, number, Ramya, it will be nice if you can share your number, but hey, look, it's a simple question, so I will quickly answer. Is PTA score acceptable in all universities and colleges of New Zealand? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it is acceptable. Yeah, and if you're looking at options in uh, New Zealand, Ramya, 
please share your number uh, so that you know our team can get in touch with you. And like I said, don't be scared of Team AJV. We are not uh, bloodsuckers. We are not leeches. We will not come after you in the middle of the night. We will just give you good, honest information. Put some, you know, good options in front of you, which a lot of other, you know, companies and agencies are not able to do because, you know, they, they really don't have the same understanding about New Zealand as our team does. So, you know, if you guys and girls, you know, Ramya, if you are serious about your future, please talk to us at the end of it. You still want to go work with somebody. So be it. But at least, you know, get some good, honest, authentic information from somebody like Team AJV. All right. And it's quite simple, guys. All you've got to do is get in touch with us on one of those uh, uh, places uh, you can uh, yeah give us a call on that toll free number if you're from india uh, and we have set up a toll free or you know send us an email or if you're already in new zealand get in touch with mary my senior colleague as well as fellow licensed advisor and why we set up a toll free number in india is because at the moment the bulk of our clients are coming from india but then we're getting a lot of clients from other countries as well in fact recently when mary and virginia of my two colleagues here in new zealand went uh, and you know hosted a dinner for uh, our students in Christchurch and had a beautiful get together you know there was also a Jordanian family so we are dealing with clients from everywhere across the world we've had clients from Brazil from Europe from North America from the Middle East from Africa from Southeast Asia uh, from South Asia of course uh, so you know we are kind of dealing with clients from everywhere so do not hesitate to get in touch with us AJV is a New Zealand company based in the city of new zealand run by a new zealander so absolutely you know we are you know cool and we are the people to talk to if you're serious about uh creating a future in new zealand all right cool right so say kumar subramaniam i'm quickly checking to see if my team has got any messages for me it looks like it's all under control at the moment uh so say kumar subramaniam asks uh, hi sir after completing Master of Digital Business, uh, job available. Uh, uh, so, 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 I mean, of course, there will be jobs available if you. It's not like, but I mean, it's not like a shop where you know, as soon as you complete a course, you'll walk in and say, "Okay, look, I have a certificate. I'll give me a job." It doesn't uh, work like that. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, but then hey, look, you know, there will be jobs available uh, uh, if you complete a Master of Digital Business uh, course because you know, hey. Uh, the whole world is uh, moving in a very digital manner and you're going to do a, a master's level, which is a level nine course, which is fantastic. Uh, and, you know, uh, the entire world is moving in a digital business fashion. What am I doing right now is I'm actually doing this digital business. I'm sitting here in my office in Hamilton, New Zealand, and I am using Facebook and YouTube to converse with you and answer your question and answers, uh, your, uh, answer your questions with my answers and here we are, you know, conducting digital business right now. So I think the, the, this is increasingly the way the world is going to move forward. So I think the scope would be good. But uh, are there, will there be jobs? Somebody will, you know, walk into your room and say, wow, you finished a master's in digital business. So here's a job. Don't think it's going to happen that way. You'll have to, you know, um, do the hard grind. And, you know, like how we say in uh, New Zealand, uh, put on some elbow grease and give it a, a bit of a push. And, you know, that's what you've got to do. But uh, yeah, I mean, the scope in your field is definitely good. So have a chat with our team, you know, when they get in touch with you, and we will definitely uh, try and see how we can, you know, take it forward from there. All right, cool. Okay, uh, my team has been asking me to uh, send out a message to Avais Khan. Uh, I'm trying to scroll back up to see if there is any question from Avais, but I don't see a question from Avais yet at the moment. I'm probably still to catch up with this question, but... Awais uh, says, oh, yeah, yeah. Awais didn't actually ask a question. He just says, hello, sir. Hi, Awais. How are you? But I have a complaint um, uh, about you, Awais, from my team. So there you go. See what the, uh, let's see if we can read that. It says, Arun, please ask Awais to share documents. All right. So that, that, that's the complaint about you, Awais, from my team. They're saying, uh, Awais, you know, we've been trying to get in touch with him, but he's not sharing his documents. Awais, request from me personally. Please, uh, you know, pick up your documents, scan them, or, you know, just take a mobile phone. And uh, if you have an app called Cam Scanner, or it's a damn good uh, uh, app, by the way, people to have on your phone. It's called Cam Scanner, uh, which I use all the time to scan documents. You take a picture with your phone and it converts into a PDF or a JPEG. And so, yeah, just use simply uh, simple available methods and tools and 
apps like that and send across your documents and we'll be pleased to take it forward from there. All right, cool. Okay, I'm going forward. Uh, I'm just trying to juggle my Skype uh, from my team as well as uh, all you guys and girls asking your questions on Facebook and YouTube. So yeah, a bit of uh, juggling act going on here, but I think I'm doing all right. Okay, next question was uh, Varsha. Uh, Hi, sir. I'm an AJV client. I have applied for admission to Lincoln University, but didn't get the offer letter yet. I fear that I may lose this intake. Hey, Varsha, you don't have to worry about it. Um, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, the uh, institutions uh, at, at this period in time uh, also do a lot of overseas uh, trips. Uh, the international departments of various uh, institutions, the you know, senior managers of that, and sometimes the admissions officers are also, you know, kind of go out and do the seminars and fairs across different parts of the world. And unfortunately, sometimes there is a delay. But hey, look, we have a fantastic repo with uh, 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 University of Lincoln. One of the senior officers there is somebody known to us personally. And, you know, what we will do is, uh, we will intercede on your behalf and send them a reminder. And team, if you are listening to this, uh, please make a note of Varsha's request. Let's send a um, reminder to Lincoln University and push them to issue that offer because quite obviously she is concerned that she might miss her intake, which is not a good thing for her, for us, or for Lincoln University. So let's get this act together and try and push it and get it done for Varsha. All right, cool. Thanks, Varsha, uh, for choosing AJB. And we will try and uh, get this uh, sorted for you at the earliest. Uh, we'll try and get onto the phone with the Lincoln University people tomorrow and check what exactly the status and try and push it forward for you. All right, cool. Right, Asa Prasob asked me a question, but he has not shared his number. So I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna keep uh, moving forward. Uh, right, Shamjir M uh, shared his number and he has also asked me a question which says, I had interest to work with AJV, but unfortunately your colleagues told me you're not supporting that college tectorium. That main reason was just tectorium, which was the only institute providing complete cloud computing course. All right. Uh, okay, Shamjir, I think you've brought up a very valid point. Uh, and see, unfortunately, uh, we do not represent all the institutions in New Zealand. Uh, we are very, picky and choosy about the institutions we work with uh, because at the end of the day, uh, the institution we refer our students to should be of a particular quality. And if that institution is not of a particular quality, we do not work with them. We don't represent with them. In fact, as the director of the company and you know, as the CEO of the company, I keep getting a lot of requests on a weekly basis saying, hey, look, Arun, can you please represent our institution. And a lot of times I immediately uh, flick that email to my other senior managers and we have a quick look to see how good or bad that particular institution is. And by and large, we say no, because you know, uh, as of now, we have all the best institutions in New Zealand on our portfolio already. So Tectorium, unfortunately, is not one of those institutions. And that's the reason we are not able to work with them and you know, help you to get into that. You know, my Team gives me feedback that you know you are wanting to get only into Tectorium because the fee in other institutions is a little higher as compared to Tectorium. And so, okay, I have no idea who this Tectorium is. I mean, like I said, if it was a good institution, I would know it instantaneously and I would give my uh, immediate response and opinion about that particular institution. At this point, I have no clue what this Tectorium is all about, but. If it has not crossed my radar, it means it's not really ringing a bell for us. And that's the reason we are not working with them. And But if your only parameter is going to be the cost and that's the reason you want to get into Tectorium, unfortunately, we are not able to help you, Shamjit, because unless or until we work, uh, you know, it's very, I'll be honest, you know, it's very easy for us. Tomorrow, I could pick up the phone and tell Tectorium saying, hey, look, we want to work with you. And they will gladly send us an agreement and then, you know, we can you know, uh, get our revenue from them and all this. But like I said, we do not work with each and every. In fact, recently we decided to stop working with another institution because a couple of our students gave us adverse feedback about that particular institution. And that's the reason, uh, you know, we are very careful about the kind of institutions we work with. So 
Unfortunately, it looks like you've chosen a particular institution purely based on the uh, you know the level of fee that they are offering. And but like I said, you know, for us, it's not just the level of fee because we are not just another Tom, Dick, and Harry agency or company. You know, we are people who are very committed to your success. So even if your the fee in some other institution is slightly higher by let's say a couple of thousand dollars, I think it is absolutely worth taking that risk because uh, not risk the extra burden of that extra money because it's not a risk. In fact, you might be actually be taking a risk in going to an institution, you know, which we are not aware of at this point in time. So, you know, uh, you don't always go by cost because, you know, uh, like some one of my colleagues was saying in the evening, you pay uh, peanuts, you get monkeys, you know, kind of that's an old cliche and uh, something that we keep repeating all the time in our everyday uh, usage. So, and I think you need to be a bit careful and I would urge you, uh, Shamjir, your you write very well. I like the way you have written your question. There is not a single spelling mistake. You are not using the typical shortened version of typing words. So I think you are a good quality person, purely based on the way you wrote your question to me. Why are you uh, not taking our advice and going to a good quality institution? Go look at an institute of technology or look at you know other institutions. But you know it looks like. But if that's the only course that is offering cloud computing, then unfortunately, we will not be able to help you. But the reasons I've, I think I've put in front of you is because we don't want to deliberately put our students uh, into a, a situation where they end up in a bad college. And, you know, we, we don't want them coming back to us later and saying, hey, look, you should have warned me before about this particular institution. So that's the way it works. So sorry about that. But uh, like I said, we would have loved to work with you because, like I said, you sound like a really good quality guy. So if you are willing to reconsider your decision and look at some other options, we would absolutely love to work with you, Shamjir. So sit back, give it a thought, because that extra couple of thousand dollars you might pay at some other institution is something you will earn back in 15 days once you finish your course and start doing your job. So it's not such a big investment, uh, Shamjir. So I really hope you sit back and give it a good, honest thought and then come back and decide to work with us. All right. In the meantime, from our side, we will take a look to see how good this tectorium is. And if it is a good institution, we will come back and you know talk to you about it. Mary, if you're listening, or Nishanti, if you're listening, please make a note of this particular institution and let's check to see if it is of the quality that we you know uh, uh, normally recommend to our students. If it is, maybe we can reach out to them and get into an agreement and still be able to help Shamjir to get into that. All right, so Shamjir, we'll do our best from our side. But from your side, I'd really like it if you can also kind of reconsider your decision because I think you can get into a good institution with the kind of quality you display through your question there. All right, cool. Okay. Uh, there was a, a question from somebody called Asa Prasob. Uh, and uh, Asa complained about you as well, Asa, uh, from my team. And it says, Asa is, uh, there you go. You can read it yourself. So it says, Asa is not responding. Please ask him to <laughs> connect uh, either with Aniket or me. That's from uh, our team leader, Sai Kiran. Uh, so Asa, there is a, a bit of, I think my team is not very happy with you at the moment. So you might want to pick up the phone and talk to them. But hey, look up. Um, to answer your question, yeah, absolutely. Hospital management and public health course, good course to consider uh, because especially in our aged care sector, there is a lot of demand at the moment for people who have completed a course in health sector. So absolutely. In fact, one of our students, if you go back to our uh, testimonials that we have listed on our AJV Global uh, YouTube channel, is a girl, a uh, young lady from India who came and is did to complete a course in health management and she found a fantastic job with uh, the you know the aged care sector and she tells us she gives us inside information about the sector and she says there are some tremendous opportunities in that particular sector and she also personally told me saying hey Arun any of our AGV students coming into New Zealand who are wanting to get into the sector and you know who have completed a health management course please refer them to me and I can help them get into jobs uh, here in New Zealand so uh, so, so I request you to pick up the phone and connect either with Aniket or with Sai Kiran. both of them are a little miffed with you right now so it'll be awesome if you can give them a call with a big smile and also make this guy smile and I'm sure everything will be rock and roll from there. All right, cool. Siddharth. Siddharth shares his uh, phone number and says, sir, I did hotel management back in India. 
I think I have the biggest uh, coffee mug in the world. What's that, guys? Yeah? <laughs> Sir, I did hotel management back in India. Which course is good between graduate diploma in hotel management or graduate diploma in applied management for my further studies in New Zealand? Your advice, please. All right. So, um, hey, Siddharth, if you already did a course in hotel management, uh, I would say, you know, stick to hotel management course because it's always good to kind of consolidate your expertise in an area in which you already have prior, uh, uh, you know, uh, you already have prior uh, experience. And I got a Skype call from one of my colleagues. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, if you already have done something in hotel management, it's a good idea to consolidate that knowledge and keep moving forward, uh, you know, especially uh, if you have, uh, being a recent graduate from, uh, you know, in hotel management in India. But if you were a graduate in hotel management in India and have substantial amount of experience uh, in uh, managing a hotel or whatever, and you think you have that enough uh, years of experience behind you uh, to be able to move into a managerial position, then it might make sense for you to go into a more general uh, management kind of a course because uh, so the way I look at things is if you've done a course in hotel management in India, but you did it very recently, then I would say consolidate your uh, your strength uh, and your knowledge of hotel management and continue with the same course. But if you have done a course in hotel management in India and you have a substantial level of experience uh, already in the hotel industry, and by substantial, I mean minimum five years or more, then I would say get into a more general management kind of a course because then that'll kind of prep you to be able to move not in pure hotel management but you know in administration finance sales marketing you know and uh, various other aspects of management that come with uh, uh, you know that particular role so hey look uh, like i said depends on your uh, qualification uh, depends on the amount of experience you've had after you completed your hotel management course in india uh, and if it is less go for another uh, graduate diploma in hotel management. And if it is more, then I would suggest go for an applied management course in, uh, uh, in New Zealand. I think that might be the, uh, yeah, best way to do this. All right, cool. Okay, next question. Shantan Patel, hi, what if the job offered, offered doesn't match to the course I had done in New Zealand? Will I be able to file PR on the basis of that job offer? No, you will not be able to. It is quite clear there is a word in the immigration law of New Zealand and the word is called relevant. I mean, the word is relevant. So when you get a job, it's got to be relevant to the course you've completed and only then uh, you would be able to progress. And Chintan, my team also tells me that you are already in touch with one of my colleagues called Mariam, but you're only looking for work. Unfortunately, work directly is almost impossible, you know, and I keep kind of explaining this uh, constantly uh, over and over uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, you have to be present in New Zealand and have a valid work visa to be able to make a legitimate effort at trying to get a job. So if you're going to be sitting in India or wherever you're based and you're looking for uh, work in New Zealand, it's almost impossible, Chitan. So do consider the study plus settle uh, seriously and uh, talk to my team, you know, talk to Mariam or uh, Sai or, uh, you know, one of our my colleagues uh, who are based out of India and we'd be happy to provide. And, you know, don't think, you know, but, but why do I have to study again? Why do I have to make this investment? It's a, small investment for a big return you know it's it's not a lot of time money or effort yeah sure at that point in time when you're uh, making that investment it might look like a lot but really you know twenty twenty five thousand dollars is not a lot of investment because assuming you complete that course successfully and you get uh the two three one two three uh post years post study work visa and you get into a job i mean at the least you will make thirty five forty thousand dollars so you know that means whatever you invested into your course will be recovered back in the first year. And after that, it's all returns for you. And of course, while you're studying, you would also be able to do part-time work, which means you're not really investing money into your living. So, you know, you're kind of earning that money and putting it towards your living. So, hey, look, you know, that's that's my 
suggestion to your uh, Chintan. So don't live with this pipe dream thinking, oh, I'll go to New Zealand only if I get uh, somebody offers me a job because quite frankly, nobody will offer you a job till you are present in New Zealand and with a valid uh, work visa. Other than that, you know, you can, you know, it's just going to be a pipe dream for you. All right, Chintan. So please talk to my team and we will definitely help you. All right. Kiran Thomas asked, hi, sir, what is the best mode of transportation from Auckland International Airport to Rotorua? Uh, hey, Kiran, there would be uh, two or three ways you can do that. One, I think Kiran is one of our students, so I'll spend a little time uh, explaining it. Uh, uh, Kiran, there, you can pay, uh, you know, book something called uh, a shuttle service uh, from uh, Auckland Airport to Rotorua. Uh, so there will be this shuttle services, uh, which is like a small minibus kind of thing, you know, and they have a trailer where they'll put your luggage in the back and stuff like that so that's one option and there will also be uh intercity buses from uh, uh the auckland airport to uh, uh Rotorua. so you know when you get down there uh, there'll be an information desk so just walk up there and ask saying hey look i want to go to Rotorua." uh yeah uh it's just been confirmed karen is one of our students and uh share your uh, share your uh, uh, cont uh you know uh uh, arrival details with Virginia. Uh, Kiran, uh, it's just been confirmed that you are one of our students. So fantastic. I kind of, you know, your name sounded familiar. So I knew you were, were probably one of our students. But uh, so what you do, Kiran, is share your arrival details with uh, Virginia. And uh, Virginia will also, Virginia, who is our onshore customer service manager, she will also post those details in our, we have a uh, closed group for on Facebook only for AJV clients. And we will uh, put... Uh, your details uh, of your arrival details and check if anybody is traveling uh, from Auckland to Rotorua. Well, look, quite a lot of our students who've been here for some time have now bought cars and they keep, uh, you know, driving around New Zealand. And Rotorua is quite a famous destination, so a lot of people do go there. Sometimes I happen to be in, uh, you know, <clears throat> Auckland uh, when I'm, you know, out on work, and you know, if I happen to be there, I'll come and pick you up, and you know, I'll drop you to Rotorua. Although from there to coming back to Hamilton is an extra. Uh, a couple of hours, but that's all right. If I happen to be in Auckland that day, maybe I'll pick you up and drop you to Rotorua. It'll be lovely to have a chat with you and drop you safely to your place. And that's the least we can do for you for, you know, for, but uh, do share your details with Virginia and she will check to see if something uh, uh, can be arranged. But otherwise, uh, there is an airport shuttle. Uh, so just Google, uh, get onto Google and say Auckland Airport Shuttle. And you will see there are two or three companies which offer the shuttle service. I always use a shuttle service when I have to go to the airport. Uh, I don't want my wife to drop me there and then come back. Uh, so I normally tend to take the shuttle. But, or there will also be an intercity bus. It's called an intercity. Uh, that like our you know city to city connecting buses. So uh, Google both this intercity as well as uh, uh, Auckland Airport shuttles, and you should be able to find your answer and check with Virginia. She'll post it on our Facebook uh, uh, clients group. And if somebody is going, I'm sure they'll offer you a drop. Or if I happen to be in Auckland, I'll pick you up and I know I'll try and drop you myself. All right, Kiran, and warm welcome to New Zealand. Hi, Mikey Aotearoa, as we say in Maori. And I hope to see you here very soon. All right, cool. Your Joban work asked, why delay visa for New Zealand? Joban, I've answered this in the last two or three sessions, in fact, including this session. So just rewind this session or go back to my previous sessions. And it's like a full-on answer why there's a delay from Immigration New Zealand. Rohit Datta asks, uh, hey, uh, so what is the prospect of Master of Finance by research? Like, do you get the full-time work permit and what is the job prospect? Hey, Rohit, uh, good question, actually. Um, Yes, I mean, if you're doing a master's by research, you actually get full-time uh, work rights, uh, which is an interesting option because the only other course which actually offers you um, full-time work rights. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. And I have a big warning uh, signal going against you, Rohit, uh, from my team saying, Rohit is uh, talking to one of our colleagues, but he is only taking information and not ready to share his documents. Do not give him too much information. Or my team is uh, picking me, Rohit. So, Rohit, there's a big red flag going against your name. Uh, but uh, you know what? Uh, it, because you know, I don't want to displace my team by giving you too much information at this stage. But yeah, it's a good course choice, and yes, you will get uh, uh, you know uh, full-time work rights. Uh, but how you succeed in New Zealand and job prospects and all that is another story altogether, Rohit. That, 
I think you're a smart young man who uh, will realize that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, coming to New Zealand is one part of the story and uh, being successful here is uh, the major part of the story. So, and for that to happen, you need to have a good coach, you know, you need to have good onshore people who will support you, who will stand by you. Like I said, you know, in the middle of this uh, session, if one of my clients calls me right now, I'll happily pick up the phone and give whatever advice they want, including uh, immigration advice, which normally otherwise we charge at, you know, $200 per hour. So there are a lot of benefits to uh, coming to New Zealand as an HIV client, right? So it is uh, not fair that you only keep taking information from us and not uh, share your documents because that it means that, you know, you obviously want information from us, but you want to give the benefit of your business or somebody else so we obviously it's not a good situation for us so may i request you to you know connect with uh, priscilla uh D'Souza, who is one of my colleagues based in india with whom you were already speaking earlier so it'll be awesome rohit if you speak to her and yeah it's a good course choice and yeah but we would love to work with you and we would truly appreciate if you're sincere from your side as well and get back in touch with uh, priscilla or respond to her uh, when she gives you a phone call and you know let's work together rohit you know it's not just those Facebook interactions. I'd love to meet you face to face uh, in New Zealand, you know, and have a cup of coffee or a beer and sit and have a chat. And you can ask me the same question and say, hey, Arun, what about my future after completing this master's in finance? And I'll sit there and I'll explain to you. And I'll pick up the phone. I'll talk to my chartered accountant and say, hey, uh, look, there is this young guy who's planning to do a course in New Zealand in, in finance. What do you think? I'll connect you to, you know, my CA or the other people from the finance background that we know. So that's the kind of work we're doing, right? So if you want all those advantages, then I think you need to really respond back to us. But otherwise, you know, I will appreciate if you or don't take only information from us and not work with us because some I mean, it, it, it's not ethical on your part. And it's just a waste of time for us. All right, cool. Zia Rahman, Rahman says, good job. Thank you, Zia. Appreciate your feedback. It's always lovely to get some uh, Nice feedback from people. And next question. <clears throat> Sandip, I think it's Sandeep, has just written it in a very fancy form and calls himself Sandip. Okay. Hi, sir. I passed my plus two in 2014. Can I apply with my gap? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Sandip or Sandeep, I don't know what way you like to be called, but yeah, gaps is not a problem, uh, especially if there was a legitimate reason for that gap, you know? A lot of people tend to take a gap. In fact, in uh, New Zealand or, you know, in most of the Western countries, so there's also a culture called the gap year, you know, where people actually do take a gap after completing high school, or uh, which uh, in India would be called the plus two. Uh, here, they call it high school. So yeah, or some take a gap year after completing their degree and then, before they want to go into their master. So yeah, gap, gaps are gaps are part of life, you know, no problem about gaps, uh, uh, especially if that gap can be explained clearly and coherently to uh, an assessing immigration officer, no problem, you know, whatsoever. We we work with people uh, who've had gaps of almost 25 years. So yeah, no problem. In fact, when I, when I went to do that course there, uh, you know, I, I was going back to study after like about, yeah, I don't know, maybe 20 years. So yeah, gaps are fine, you know, gaps are part of life. But hey, look, thanks for sharing your number. We'll get in touch with you and put some options in front of you. But we have an absolute A1 uh, visa processing team. Don't worry about your gap. We know how to, uh, you know, uh, compile your application and present it in the right manner to Immigration New Zealand and also work with you and, you know, uh, coach you and uh, talk you through how you can uh, confidently answer any questions that might come from, uh, you know, a visa officer. So yeah, no problem about that. All right, team, how am I doing on time? My throat is uh, ringing the bell already because, uh, okay. Naveen K, I'm planning to do a data analytics course from University of Canterbury. I have nine years of work experience. Could you please suggest on how is the job demand in New Zealand? I'm an AJV client. Hey, Naveen, thank you so much for, uh, sharing your question and thank you for confirming you're an AJV client, really appreciate it. Very proud to have you as uh, our student uh, because you're obviously a person of uh, um, uh, high intellect. Although my team says that you're 
probably uh, not working with us is what my team says, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, yeah, Naveen uh, is working with uh, my uh, colleague uh, Madhvi. Yeah, fantastic, Naveen. Thanks for choosing to work with uh, us. We really appreciate that. Uh, University of Canterbury, exceptional choice. Uh, uh, Master of uh, Data Analytics, absolutely fantastic choice. You know, this world is all about data. In the last one year, I, uh, sorry, in the last one uh, hour that I have been sitting and talking uh, live on Facebook and YouTube, I don't know how much data I generated. Uh, through video, audio, and you know, script and everything else. So it is the world of data and data analytics and modeling and all that stuff is where uh, the future is. And you know, because people will need to make uh, uh, sense out of this terabytes and tera, you know, whatever the next byte is of uh, data that is being produced uh, is being produced. And University of Canterbury is right at the cutting edge of uh, research and. Uh, uh, work on uh, areas like this. So I think overall your choice of university is great. Your subject choice is great. You have fantastic work experience, nine years of work experience. And I think the uh, the jobs in this area, because it does come under IT, which is the in the long-term skill shortage list of New Zealand, I think overall great combination. And then you're also choosing to work with HIV. And, you know, like I told you, my colleagues, uh, Mary and Virginia recently did a uh, get together of all our clients and students in, your, in uh, Christchurch. And, you know, also there's a nice community of HIV people already there. We will connect you to them as soon as you land and stuff like that. So I think overall your, your <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, all the pieces of the puzzle are moving into place quite clearly. And I think you'll be uh, successful. Loving. And thanks once again for choosing to work with us. All right, cool. One last question and I shall be done. All right, cool. My team is already going. Uh, time up, AJ. Time up, AJ. All right. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Arun. I'm working. This is from Shaiju Matthew. Shaiju, you must share your number, Shaiju, because I will not be able to answer that question. Okay. Kiran says, thank you, sir. Hey, Kiran, you're welcome. And if you see, Virginia, our customer service manager, has also already responded, saying, Hi, Kiran. I think we've spoken before. Feel free to call me. So, Kiran, please get in touch with Virginia. Uh, and yeah, we'll be happy to uh, take you forward from there. OK, guys, one last question. Um, <laughs> Nathan Vincent says, uh, Nathan, uh, sir, I have already registered with another agency. Is it possible for me to uh, cooperate with you after reaching New Zealand? Hey, Nathan, we have no problem. Uh, we will always say yes to new business, of course. Uh, but the problem is, you know, if you're coming to New Zealand uh, as a non ajb student, uh, you lose out on a lot of benefits that we provide to our students. Uh, and I think the biggest benefit they get from us is our friendship. I'm being honest about it, you know, because you can't, you can't put a value on that, can you? You know, how can you uh, put a value on friendship? You know, and as some of my AJV students, I'm such a... Uh, bad person that, you know, when it comes to my AJV clients, I go all out and, you know, I'm for, you know, taking them around and we're playing cricket and we're playing TT and catching up for beers or dinners or going out on drives or trekking and stuff like that. But when it comes to non AJV students, I stay completely far away, you know. So not just myself, you know, that's just the kind of psyche that we've built into our organization. So, you know, you know and they, 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 our students, they keep calling us middle of the night, the day before yesterday. Somebody called me at 12.30 in the night. So I picked up the phone because one of our students who was in a bit of a panic situation. So, you know, we kind of uh, answered all those questions. But I would really like you, Nathan, to get in touch with our advisors. You know, uh, have a chat with our team leader, Kolsai, who will get in touch with you. Uh, let's see if it is possible for you to shift from that other agency. We are not people who are trying to steal you from the other guys. But if this is for you. It is not about that agency. We don't even know which one it is. It's not about them. It is about you. It is about your future, and you're obviously on this forum asking me questions uh, because you perceive an advantage to you in working with us. So I think you guys you know, and girls, whoever is watching this, need to take advantage of the fact that AJB is here. We are committed. We are friendly. We are frank, and we are all there to support you all the time. Look at our students, you know, Kiran, uh, who wanted to know about transportation from Auckland to Rotorua. We are getting it sorted even while they're speaking, you know, and so we are we are always there for you guys. So, Nathan, I would really like you uh, to uh, pick up the phone and have a chat with uh, 
Sai, uh, uh, our uh, team leader. And hopefully we will get to work with you and see you here in New Zealand as an AGV student who will get tons of free information, lots of good uh, advice. And more than anything else, you will get our friendship, which I think uh, is a big morale booster. All right, guys, uh, here's my <laughs> end of the session bell ringing, which I do at the end of each session. But hey, look, as always, it was a pleasure to catch up and uh, I'll look forward to this session. So, as you guys can see, I'm putting on my warm fleece, uh, hunting and fishing uh, fleece, which means it's getting beginning to get colder in New Zealand. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a pleasure to always come here week after week. And uh, yeah, I'd love to uh, continue to share my uh, uh, knowledge and information with all of you. But for all those of you who chose to work with uh, AJV and come to New Zealand through us, thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. And uh, we will always be grateful to you for that. All right, good night till the next time. See you again. Kakite uh, ano in Maori, which means see you later. All right, take care. Bye bye.